slash donate. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا. من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي الله. وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له. وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله. يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله قات قاته. ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهم رجال كثيرا ونساء وتقوا الله الذي تساءلنا به والأرحم إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث الكتاب الله وخير الحد حد محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم والشراء الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة دلالة وكل دلالة في النار. My dear brothers and sisters. <coughs> There's a lot going on in the world right now. And the majority of it has to do with us. I mean, this is just the reality of the world. What is on the news, what is in the news, what is about the news has to do with Islam and the Muslims in some form or fashion. Even though it might be labeled as something else. This is, this is the reality. We know this is the way of the media anyway. They say one thing, but if any of you have ever had any touches with journalism, you will know that the media says one thing, and in reality it is meant to mean something else. And for those who understand, they understand what is truly meant. All of this is happening while this ummah is at a place where there is a lot of confusion within Islam, within the ummah. Within the ummah of Muhammad wasallam, there is tremendous confusion. And I see this, I see it everywhere I go. Every country I have been to in the past year, there is confusion, there is misinformation. There are a lot of people who don't know what it is they should be doing, what they should not be doing, or where they should be going. And this is a major problem. It's a major problem. And a lot of times, we ask ourselves, what is it that we can do? What is it that we can do as Muslims to better this situation? You know, in times like this, when the ummah is being tested so heavily, when the ummah is being tested so heavily, there is one tool that we need more than anything else. And this tool is Iman. This tool is Iman. Because you see, Iman is the catalyst by with which everything else happens for the believer. Without this understanding of the type of Iman that we must have, then we will fail. Wallahi, we will fail. This is reality. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says very clearly in the Qur'an, قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ That indeed the believers are successful. The believers, those people who possess Iman, they will be successful. And by that standard, it means that the opposite is also true. That those without Iman, those without belief, will be losers and they will fail. You see, this is what we have to understand, brothers and sisters. There's so much at stake right now. So much at stake and so very little maybe you and I can do as one human individual. Very little. But our Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can make the impossible possible. Our trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, complete reliance on Allah, can make that which no one ever thought might be able to happen, happen very easily. You see, this is something the believers have to grasp once again. I'll give you a couple of stories, examples. This is a, a topic that could be discussed at length and at length and at length and at length. Let's look at the story of Musa alayhi salam. Musa. When Fir'aun had his dream, he had a dream that there would be someone who would come from Bani Israel who would overthrow his kingdom. Would overthrow his kingdom. You see, and this frightened him. This frightened him. So what did he decide to do? 
take some logical action. Some logical action. Tyrannic action. He decided to kill all of the male children of Bani Israel. Prevent this from happening. Enslave their women. So that this will not happen. So this is the plot that he planned. And he carried it out. The mother of Musa salam was pregnant. But she was able to hide her pregnancy. You can, you can hide pregnancy. If you dress appropriately, you can hide pregnancy. But when the baby was born, there's no way to hide an infant. A crying baby is a crying baby. All of you who are parents know this. There's nothing you can do about that. So she had no idea. Now what do I do? What do I do? This is a woman from Bani Israel who had iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal. So she put her faith in Allah. Ya Allah, what do I do? What do I do? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told her the plan. The plan. Take your child, put him in a box, and put him into the river. What river? Nahrnil, the Nile River. Have any of you ever been to the Nile River? If any of you have ever been to Egypt, I used to live, alhamdulillah, with a flood facing the Nile River in Egypt, alhamdulillah. This is not just a little stream that's just, you know, bubbling along. This is a, a, a very strong, currented river. A human being, if I jumped in the middle of it, I might not be safe. Much less putting a child in it. So the logical recourse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given her, if she used her logic, then she would not do it. Because this is insane. This is, this is killing my own child. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised her, if you do it, I promise you he will be safe and I will raise him up to be a leader and prophet amongst his people. So, Musa's mother now has the task at hand. Do I trust in me? And what I know is logical, if I put my child in a river, it'll die. Or do I have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So she trusted in Allah, placed him in. And he started to float away. So she sent her daughter, go and see where this thing goes. Just, just keep an eye on it and tell me where it goes. Now remember the promise is that Allah would protect him from Fir'aun and raise him to be a leader amongst his people. Now where does this box drift and land? It lands at the palace of Fir'aun. It sets itself on the shores of the very place that it was, she was trying to protect him from. Now logically, again, logically, this is a disaster. This is a disaster. She trusted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, placed her child in the river to protect him from Fir'aun. Now he lands in Fir'aun's backyard, subhanAllah. And many people, many of us would have lost hope that the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not been fulfilled. He's going to be killed surely. This is the end of it. But you see, we don't always understand the plan of Allah azza wa jal. We don't. This is why iman is so important. Because it's not always that you need to trust the plan. You need to trust the planner. You need to trust the planner. And the planner is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal. The controller of the heavens and the earth. The controller of all affairs. You see Allah had one of His agents inside of the house of Fir'aun. Allah had one of His agents. You see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us that it's not always the brothers dressed in fatigues on the front lines that work for him, for his sake, in his army. Allah has his army everywhere. Places that you can't even imagine. He has his workers. Inside of the house of Fir'aun was Fir'aun's wife, who had belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. She kept it, she hid it. And this is where the story takes the turn. Fir'aun's wife finds the child. She falls in love with it instantly. Instantly. Falls in love with this child and begs her husband to allow her to adopt it. And he reluctantly does so. He reluctantly does so. Now, they had problems with this child because it wouldn't breastfeed. It wouldn't take any milk from any woman. They kept bringing woman after woman after woman. And he would not take it. So he was going to die. If this child doesn't eat, he will die. So as the sister of Musa had seen this taking place, because she was spying, she was watching, she came forward and said, can I guide you to that which will solve it? Can I guide you to the one who I guarantee you will be able to breastfeed him? They said, sure, send him. So he sent for her mother. The mother of Musa comes 
after trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dropping her son in the river, not knowing whether she will ever see him again or not. She comes and as soon as she approaches, he starts to feed. Alhamdulillah. See, the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is perfect. It is perfect. And then so the wife of your own negotiates with her, look, we'll hire you, you come here, you come here and feed and this, and, but you see she had bargaining power now. She was the one who could make her demands, because who else are you going to get? No. You bring him to my home. You bring him to my home, how many times a day? Over and over and over again, every day you bring him to my house, and I'll feed him there. That's my only condition. And so she agreed. Now this same child who was on a death list, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told her to get rid of, he was put on a box and floated to Fir'aun. Now he is being marched to his own home by a royal procession. And when he is in that home, guards are surrounding him to make sure nothing happens to him, subhanAllah. You see, this is the plan of Allah that we don't always see. We can't always see the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until it starts to unfold itself. But this is only because she decided to fuel this plan with her iman, trusting in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we all know the story of what happened next. Musa alayhi salam grows up to bring down Fir'aun and free the children of Israel and become one of the greatest of the anbiya to ever walk the face of this earth. You see, this is the plan of Allah for the believers. This is the plan of Allah. We not, may not, not always see it. It might seem though is impossible. There is no way. No way. The conditions are far too out of hand for this to be possible. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, well, with me, anything is possible. All things are possible. There is nothing that is outside the grasp and the power and the ability of the creator of all things. Later on, this same Musa alayhi salam, when he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and this is one of the greatest gifts given to Nabi Musa alayhi salam, is that he spoke to Allah with no intermediary. Directly Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to him from the burning bush. And what did Allah tell him to do? First of all, that he was going to be a prophet, go to Pharaoh, etc. And then Allah told him, I want to show you something, what I can do. Throw your stick. Because Musa always had the walking stick with him. Throw your stick. So Musa threw his stick and it turned into a snake. And what does the Qur'an say he did? He took off running. He took off running so fast he didn't even turn around and look. He was absolutely terrified of this stick that had turned into a snake. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthened him with the iman. And Allah sent him to Musa, uh, Allah sent him to Fir'aun. And he challenged Fir'aun, challenged him. And Fir'aun said, you're nothing but a sorcerer. You're nothing but a magician. I have plenty of them. Better than you, the best that the earth has ever seen. I have them. And these are not sleight of hand magicians. These are people who were trained in the art of magic. So Musa alayhi salam said, bring them together on the day of Yom Zina. The biggest day of all of Egypt when everybody will come. You see, this is the iman of the believer. Bring them on the biggest day. Not let's test it out and you know, we'll meet them together alone where nobody can see and let's see if this thing works. Musa had complete trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bring whoever you got, all that you have, the best that you have, the brightest that you have, bring them. And I'll show you the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whom you deny. So they were all brought. Thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of them were brought on this day. And they were aligned in ranks. Imagine this scene, brothers and sisters. Aligned row after row after row of these powerful magicians. And here is Musa alayhi salam, all alone. Here's Musa. But you see, brothers and sisters, someone who has true faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who has true alliance, reliance in Allah, they are never alone. Never, ever, ever are they alone. Ever. And so Musa even told them, go ahead, throw. Let me see what you got. That's it. Give me the best that you have. And they threw and their sticks started moving and a great scene happened. Something Hollywood cannot replicate in its best attempt is happening in front of the eyes of all of these people, amazing them. And Allah said that even Musa had a little bit, a little bit of fear came inside of him. He's a human being. This amazing scene has happened. His initial Reaction, little fear. 
But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthened him. He had made the initial step. You see, brothers and sisters, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Have iman in him and just take the initial step. Come running, walking towards me and I'll come running towards you. Take a step towards me, I'll take two towards you. Just a little bit of effort on my behalf. This was the same with Musa's mother. Just drop him in. Just, I'll take care of the rest. You just do a little bit. Allah only wants a little from us. And He's willing to give everything. Everything. So Musa threw. And it devoured all of that spectacle. That amazing spectacle that everybody was am amazed. That oh Musa's crushed. This is over. It's done. Snapped it up like that. As if it did not ever exist. So much so. So powerfully. So clearly. That all of these magicians. Fell down and sujood for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of them. And what had Fir'aun promised them in the first place? Fir'aun had promised them money. He had promised them power. You'll be my closest advisors. We'll be buddies. You'll be buddies with the king of the world. Now they're falling in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in sujood. Believing in Allah, saying that we believe in the Lord of Musa alayhi salam. And Fir'aun is threatening them. What is wrong with you? Do you not know I will crucify you? I will cut off your hands and your legs and watch you die slowly. You see how quickly Iman had entered into their hearts? They said, we don't care. Do as you wish we believe in the Lord of Musa. And this is what eventually came to bring down the very tyranny of Fir'aun and his people. You see, brothers and sisters, this is what this ummah needs today. We need Iman. We need Iman that is put into action. Iman that is willing to take a step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Iman that is willing to say, Ya Allah, what do you want from me? We have too many people today that are ready. They're ready in their minds to think, to take the greatest steps. We're ready to put our lives on the line for Iman. Alhamdulillah. But how many of us are even willing and, willing and ready to get up our, out of our beds at 5.30 in the morning, get in our vehicles and drive to the masajid and stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in jama'ah in the middle of the morning, in the early of the morning. You can't even do that, but you're ready to put your life on the line for Islam. Who are you fooling? Who are you fooling? Who are you fooling? We have so much to be done. You want to say that you want to go from being the weakest of Muslims to the greatest of Muslims overnight. But yet when your alarm goes off at 3 in the morning for Qiyamah Layl, you hit the snooze button and roll over. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is standing in the nearest heavens in a manner that befits His majesty and honor. Unlike His creation, calling out to all the inhabitants of this earth, who is willing to stand for me and ask for me to forgive them? I'm ready to give it to them. We'll hit the snooze button and roll over. But we're ready to take over the world, right? You see, brothers and sisters, we're missing a lot. We're missing the basics. It does not take great leaps. It takes small steps. Sincerely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that can change everything in an instant. Let's look at the life of the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam. When he's ready to make hijrah. When the Meccans know that if we can stop him now, it's over. Surround his house. There's no way he can go. We got him. It's over. It's done. If he takes a step out, we'll kill him. And if not, before Fajr, we'll kill him. Little did they know that they plotted and planned. Makaru wa makarullah. They plotted and planned and Allah planned. And Allah is the best of those who plan. And the Prophet والسلام, walked right past them. Later on in the Battle of Badr, a couple hundred couple hundred facing thousands. Subhanallah. Couple hundred facing a thousand. And what is it logically going to look like is going to happen? If we were to use our logic, we would say it's over. If you were to go outside right now and there's 300 people ready to fight a thousand, you'd be like, man, let's watch this massacre. This is going to be interesting. And that's what the Meccans thought they had. That's what they thought they had. We got them now. This is it. We're going to exterminate them today. And even as shaytan as the Prophet والسلام, said was there on that day urging them, do away with them, finish them off. And the Prophet والسلام, didn't tell them, let's go get some more weapons. Let's go get some more people. You know, this is, this is a fight we can't win. Let's just, let's, just, let's just let this one be. No. His Iman spoke. 
and he raised his two fingers, or his two hands in front of him to the heavens and he said, Oh Allah, here are your believers. This is what you have on earth. If we are destroyed today, you will no longer be worshipped after this day. You see, Iman spoke. And the battle began and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his real soldiers. He sent the angels to protect and defend them and rout the Meccans. And this is what happened, they lost. We forward a little bit to the battle of Khandaq. The battle of the trench. When they had dug a trench on one side of Medina, the exposed side. Now was that trench enough? No, it wasn't sufficient. There was 10,000. You think some point they wouldn't eventually have figured out how to get over it? Of course they would have figured out how to get over it. But this was just the best that they could do. This is, we're doing what we can do. The rest we put up to uh, the trust of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, the munafiqeen came running to them. Are you serious? Do you think this plan is going to work? This trench is going to stop them. Don't you know that one of the largest armies that have ever been assembled on these lands is on the other side? Are you out of your mind in order to make them afraid? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it only increased their iman. Because they knew the tougher the battle, the stronger the test, the harder the test, the more that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is on the side of the believers who trust in Him. So they said to them clearly, boldly, no question. Yes, we understand that trench is not enough. We got that. Our numbers are not enough. We got that. Our weapons are not enough. We know that. But, husban Allah wa nima wa Allah is enough. Allah is enough for the believer. When the believer has a firm reliance on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, nothing else is necessary. They took the steps that they could take, they put in some effort for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they left the rest to Allah. And they went to bed. The next morning they woke up to find no one. No one left. Not a single person left to challenge them. Completely routed. They did not even have to lift one finger except for a couple of skirmishes that took place. You see, this is the iman. This is iman in action. Iman is intangible. We can't see it, but we can see its results. We do see the results of it in our lives. This is what this world needs, iman. Because our strength will never be enough. There is no power, there is no strength, no capability, except the capability that Allah gives to you. We have to grasp that. I cannot walk one step from this minbar if Allah does not give me the ability and will to do so. I know that. Every breath I take is because Allah has given me the ability to do so. Every step I take is because Allah has empowered me to do so. And at any moment, at any time, at any place, Allah can strip it from me. And that's the reality. Our power will never be enough. Our numbers will never be enough. Our strength will never be enough. But for sure, Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Jalla wa ala, the creator of all things, is always going to be enough. So if we are failing, it's because our Iman is failing us. We are failing ourselves with our Iman. This is something I have no doubt in. If we are losing, it's because we already killed ourselves with our own Iman. We destroyed our own selves by failing to have trust properly in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Have no doubt about this. We need to wake up to the reality that we don't live in a three-dimensional world. That's only where we are temporarily with our bodies. This world is much more than that. Much more than that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal has already promised you. قَدْ أَفْلَحَ الْمُؤْمِنُونَ The believers are successful. Do you doubt that? Do you doubt that Allah promised you 1400 years ago that you, if you possess Iman, you are successful? What are we afraid of? That those people who command to good and forbid evil and they have that faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah has promised these people are successful. Allah has promised the believers Jannah. Do you doubt that? Allah has promised you, if you believe in me, no matter what you go through in this life, no matter what you struggle through, no matter what happens to you, that at the end of the road, Jannah belongs to you. 
Do you doubt that for one minute? The Prophet والسلام, said, Allah has promised the believers that which an eye has never seen, that which an ear has never heard about, that which a mind cannot imagine. Do you doubt that? If you have no doubt in that, you will never be worried about what we are confronted with. It will never cause you a night of restless sleep. It will never cause you heartache for one moment because you will know no matter what I'm going through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the plan. And I'm just going to stick to the plan. It's going to stick to the plan. Trust in Allah, do what's within my capacity to do, and the success of it is in the hands of my Creator. أقول قاضي هذا واستغفره ولكم فاستغفره إن غفره الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله brothers and sisters we have an iman crisis that's what we have we have an Iman crisis going on in this Ummah. Not only do Muslims have a problem believing, they have a problem believing correctly. This is another problem. It's not that we don't believe in anything, but we don't know what we should properly believe in. This is a problem. This is where this Ummah needs to go back to the basics. Forget about everything that is esoteric and has no effect on your daily life whatsoever. And let's get back to the basics. Belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger and what that really means. What that really, really means. If we are in Iman crisis, how do we get it back? How do we get it back? How do we continue to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The first and foremost, brothers, is you need to have a reconnection. And I've talked about this on this minbar a number of times. You need to have a reconnection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to reconnect your life with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that comes about through the ibadah that you give to Allah, and, and, and most importantly, it comes to having a connection to the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-Qur'an al Qur'an. Because there is no ibadah that you can offer to Allah. There is no salah that you're going to give to Allah. You're not going to stand up in the middle of the night, in the middle of the day, in the morning, in the evening, and pray to Allah if you have not included a part of His kitab. It's not possible. So your connection to the Qur'an, Ask yourself, what is my connection to the book of Allah? That will automatically give you a litmus test of what your connection is with your Rabb. What your connection is with your Rabb. Allah doesn't need you to be the most pious worshiper that has ever lived on the face of this earth. He doesn't need you to offer 50 salawat today. He didn't need that. If He wanted that, He would have required that. What Allah subhanahu wants is that everything you give to Him, you give it for His sake alone. For His sake alone, even if it's little. Even if the best you can do right now is your five daily salawat, give that sincerely for Allah. Take those five minutes and say, nothing else matters right now except Allah. When you say Allahu Akbar, that means that Allah is greater than everything. Allah is greater than your problems right now. Allah is greater than your money right now. Allah is greater than your family right now. Everything that you're worried about, that you're stressed about, when you say Allahu Akbar, you're making a testification that Allah is greater than that, and I need to have my focus right here, right now. This is the type of, of effort that we can make simply, simply, with trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, doing things solely for Allah's sake. This is what we need. Maybe you have been very slacking in your deen. Maybe the only time you've made it to the masjid in the past two months is during the Salat al-Jumu'ah, maybe. But that doesn't mean you can't change that. You can fix that today. You can change that tomorrow morning. You can be a new person when you wake up. When you go to bed tonight, you can say to yourself, and you can say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, tomorrow I'm going to be different. I'm going to be better. I'm going to do more. Give me the tawfiq to be able to fulfill my words. And Allah will strengthen you. Trust me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never ever let you down. Ever. There is no way. Inna Allah la yukhlifu al-mi'ad. Allah does not break His promises. He does not disappoint the believers. He does not fail them. It has never happened and it will never happen. And you're not going to be the first one. So please, brothers and sisters, maybe you've been on the wrong road. Maybe you've been hanging out with the wrong people. Maybe you've been involved in the wrong thing. Maybe you know for a long time your heart's been poking you. The time to change, it's time to change. That's your own soul warning you, it's time to change. The angel of death is chasing you, time to change. 
There's nothing stopping you from that. But you. But you. You can be better. That's what this ummah needs. We need an attitude that, Ya Allah, we want to be better. We don't want to be perfect. We'll never be perfect. It's impossible. But we want to be better. And we want to be better solely for Allah's sake. If we see that type of change in this ummah, just a sincere ummah that maybe they don't have the most knowledge, maybe they aren't the most pious worshippers, maybe they aren't giving hundreds and thousands of charity, but they have made a sole commitment to be better for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal alone. And they are leaving the results of what happens around them and the results of what comes of their life to the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His plan. If you do this, brothers and sisters, you will be successful. You'll be successful. I don't care if you end up with nothing. I don't care if they take your job and your home and your car and you end up in the streets with your family. If you continue to trust in the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will come. Finally, lastly, I'll give you one small story. There's a story about the time of Dawood alayhi salam. This is where we end. A woman came to Dawood alayhi salam and she said, Dawood, is Allah just? Is Allah just or unjust? And he said, Woe to you woman, what kind of question do you ask? Surely there is no one that is more just than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, what, what, What's the matter? She said, On the way, I'm a, a single mother. I'm a single mother. I support my children. I put food in their mouths by knitting, by making garments and taking them to the market and sell them, and then buying food and taking it home and putting it on my family. That's all I have every day is what I bring home. Now I was on the way to the market and a bird came and swooped what I had knitted out of my hand and took it off. And now I have nothing to give to my children. So it's not Allah unjust or just. You see, sometimes we're tested. When we decide I want to trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is going to test you. Do you think that you say you will believe and you won't be tested? You're going to be tested. For sure you'll be tested. There were times in my life, and I don't like including personal stories. There was a time in my life where I had nothing, and wallahi, Allah is my witness, I was walking the streets of my hometown, looking for coins on the streets to buy anything to eat and put in my stomach. Wallahi, adheem, Allah knows. I had nothing. I had nothing. But I never once, never once doubted that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would eventually find the way. Alhamdulillah. Allah provides. Allah is our razaq. So, at that time, a woman, a, 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 a group came in of, of merchants, sailors. They came in and they each had, they each had a hundred dinar, similar to, to in, in money at that time. And they said, we want to donate this to the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and want you to choose whom to it should go to. And they, they, they asked, what, what, do you, what do you mean? They said, we were out sailing, coming here. And a great storm came and made, uh, damaged our boat. And it seemed as if we were going to die. And we made an oath that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would bring us out of this difficulty, we would donate what we had in His sake. And then a bird came and dropped some materials, this yarn and knitting material that we needed to fix our boat. So we repaired our boat with it. And we've made it here and we hand it to you. He looked at the woman and he said, Is not Allah just? You are doubting your Rabb who works for you on land and at sea. And you're doubting him. And he gave her the whole thousand dinar and said, go feed your children. You see, this is sometimes we have to just trust in the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We can't be so quick to jump to a reaction. We can't be so quick to lose our heads. We can't be so quick to doubt. Because the plan of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sometimes doesn't make sense to your little feeble mind. There might be other things at work throughout the universe that Allah is putting into motion just for you and you don't know it and you're doubting. Allah might be moving the heavens and earth for you and you might be doubting. Just trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There has never been a believer that has ever brought any story forward that they've ever trusted in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of their trust and He has ever let them down. And I'm still waiting for one to come forward. It doesn't happen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala supports those who believe. Qad aflahal mu'minun. The believers are already successful. ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا أذاب النار سبحان سبحان ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنة 
وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا ذا من نار رب اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وإسرافنا في أمرنا والثابت أقدامنا وانصرنا على قوم الكافرين اللهم أنصر إسلام المسلمين اللهم أنصر إسلام المسلمين اللهم أنصر وعز إسلام المسلمين في كل مكان يرحم الرحيمين وعذل تشرك والمشركين سبحانك ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين